So you're very welcome to this presentation on ANZAB Partel and CAI supports for energy retrofit. My name is Antonella Uras and I work as um, Niall um, introduced me, just introduced me. I work, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, uh, in NSAI on um, the, in the ANZAB and the high performance retrofit program as the interim program manager. So I'll start with a short introduction on the ANZAB standard and its definition in the regulations. We'll then go through an overview of part T of the building regulations for both domestic and non-domestic and for new building and major renovations. We we'll look at the implementation of part L conformance checks and finally SEAI's role in providing supports for building energy upgrades. The energy performance of, bu of buildings directive or EPBD mandates for member states to ensure new buildings are nearly uh, zero energy buildings by the end of December 2020, so that's just a few months ago, and specified the earlier date of 2018 for buildings owned and occupied by public authorities, so that's been in place for um, just uh, about longer than two years. It also mandated the requirement for major renovations to be at cost optimal level. And I suppose the objective of the EPD is to promote the improvement of the energy performance of buildings in the EU, taking into account the climatic and local conditions and cost effectiveness. And the actual definition of ANZEB refers to a very high energy performance and to the fact that the very low amount of energy used should be covered to a very significant extent by energy from renewable sources. The concept of major innovations and the requirements for these to be in line with the cost optimal level are also defined in the EPBD. And the Irish implementation of, ANZAP, of the ANZAP definition required identifying the cost optimal level in the Irish national uh, context, following the framework established in European regulations. So the cost optimal analysis consists first in identifying a number of reference buildings, then in calculating the energy demand for different measures and packages, and then the operating uh, costs, um, the capital and operating costs of these. The cost optimal levels of energy performance are then identified, and the framework requires amendments where the gap between the energy performance of the building codes and the cost optimal level are greater than uh, 15%. So the cost optimal uh, study reports for both residential buildings and non-residential are available um, on the Department of Housing website. And this, uh, this, this uh, study um, is repeated every uh, five years. So the latest was uh, 2018. And one of the most relevant of the um, implementations of, of EPBD in Irish regulations is part L of the building regulations. So this is the part on conservation of fuel and energy. The latest revision was in 2019 and the technical guidance document or TGDL provides guidance on how to achieve compliance. So although for new dwellings, there is no direct BR rating requirement in Partel, in practice, these are the likely minimum BR ratings for the different revisions of Partel. So we can see that the improvements in minimum energy performance went from uh, C1 in uh, 2005 to an A2 in the, 20, in the 2019 revision. The main areas to keep in mind for compliance are the fabric U values, thermal bridges, high levels of air tightness, 
uh, heating appliances that are efficient and low carbon and achieving the minimum level of renewables. Finally, uh, the energy and carbon performance coefficients need to be lower than the minimum permitted. TGDL um, specifies the backstop U values in table one for new dwellings and in table five for existing dwellings. Uh, in terms of thermal bridging, the Y factor is the value entered in the DEEP software for uh, the calculations uh, related to uh, Bartel and for the BR calculations. Uh, we can see that um, two uh, values that uh, can be uh, used, um, let's say directly is 0 0.15 when no information on junctions is available. Uh, 0 0.08 can be used when there is ACD sign off. These are the acceptable construction details that are provided uh, within the regulations. Um, and the Y factor can also be calculated based on the psi values and the length of the junctions. But clearly the psi values needs to be sourced either from the ACDs when there is a sign off or from thermal modeling, or it can be a mix of both within the calculation. Appendix D of TGDL provides more details on the thermal bridging calculations, and thermal modeling of junctions must be carried out by certified thermal modelers, and they must sign off on the modeling and on the uh, modeled um, psi values. On air tightness, testing must be carried out on all dwellings and the backstop of five cubic meters per hour per square meter must be achieved. Air tightness is also clearly linked to ventilation and part of requirements are dependent on the level of air tightness achieved. For heating and hot water systems, an additional guidance document is available from the Department of Housing on achieving compliance. Other requirements in uh, uh, Partel relate to insulation of pipes, ducts, um, and hot water tanks and me mechanical ventilation. A new section 2.3 of TGDL details requirements for buildings undergoing major renovations. The energy performance must be either improved to uh, a B2 rating or alternatively uh, cost optimal upgrade works are specified in the, the TGDL. Works included are either insulation works of external walls or an extension and only meet the definition um, when more than 25% of the heat loss envelope is renovated. So cavity fill is not included in the insulation works of external walls because it's not considered to be a major um, work. The first option of cost optimal uh, level is to achieve B2 rating. So um, a level of 125 kilowatt hour um, per square meter per year. Um, also alternatives are available and they consist in upgrading roof insulation at ceiling level and replacing certain heat sources. Uh, heat sources in, in certain cases. As an example for a typical semi-D with the deck characteristics indicated here, a window replacement uh, will um, would not, uh, if it was on its own, would not constitute a major renovation. But uh, for example, installation of external wall insulation or installation of dry lining insulation on, on walls would uh, constitute a major innovation because it will impact 35% of the envelope 
And then obviously, if the window replacement is added to that, the percentage of the building envelope increases and so on for replacement of the roof structure or uh, replacement of the floor. So in this case, um, either the B2 level is achieved or additional works are required. For a terrace house, um, instead, still the window replacement on its own does not constitute a major renovation regardless of the area that it's involved. And in this case, even um, external wall insulation would not constitute a major innovation because it would only affect 22% of the envelope. But um, for example, if we add the ceiling insulation to the external wall, it still does not constitute a major innovation because it, it will only reach, uh, I mean, it will reach 53%, but this type of work, ceiling insulation is not included. We need, it needs to be um, basically a replacement of a roof structure for, um, in relation to works carried out on the, on the roof to uh, add up to the major works. So in this case, uh, for example, if we um, install external wall insulation and we replace the windows, it will uh, constitute a major renovation and so on with, um, other uh, works had the same um, requirements as I explained before are um, up, will, would apply in this case. So I'll talk a bit about the deep software now. Some of you must be familiar already with the um, new deep software released over a year ago. It's now cloud-based and accessible also to design professionals that are not BR assessors with differences in functionality related, for example, to the publication of BRs, but the same calculation engine. Just um, in terms of uh, the use of uh, the deep software by, by non-BR assessors, it, it's, um, it's a tool to check partial compliance and BR calculations um, in the design, but it's not a design tool to be used for purposes such as sizing uh, systems and other um, design activities. It's very easy to get access by registering with your email address. And um, the main guidance document for the DEEP methodology and uh, software is the DEEP manual. The manual is and other guidance documents and tools that form part of the DEEP methodology are available on the SAI website under domestic BR resources. And this is what the survey screen in DEEP4 uh, looks like, the initial screen. This is the part of the software where inputs are, um, are made and there's um, a number of uh, navigation tabs for the different aspects of the calculation. Um, and there's panels to check the progress and the, the, on the calculations and on the partial performance. Um, the assessment part of the software displays the, re the results um, for the general results and the results on the different um, elements, for example, on the building, on the ventilation, and so on. Um, part, L, uh, part L report can be generated here, PDF part L report, and the dwelling report, which lists all the inputs and calculation results. But I have to note that uh, the Partel report generated here for um, uh, an assessment that is not uh, a published PR is not generally accepted for building by building controls. So in the Partel report needs to be from a published BR. On the non-domestic side, the current technical guidance document for Partel other than dwellings is the 2017 version. This has, um, again, sections on fabric performance and building services, but also on construction quality. 
major innovation requirements are also defined for non-domestic buildings and the ratio of renewables for non-domestic is 20%, but this is reduced to 10% where EPC and CPC meet a lower uh, threshold. Similarly to dwellings, table one defines the U value requirements for new builds and notes apply to, to these uh, values displayed in, in this table. For example, on floors, you can see 0 0.21 is actually lowered to 0 0.15 when there is underfloor heating. And other requirements also apply, which are um, similar to the dwellings uh, partel, for example, on thermal bridging, air tightness testing, and the target uh, of five kilometers per hour per square meter also applies. And there are also provisions to limit overheating. Um, again, requirements on the building services are um, specified and uh, in this case they're based on non-domestic building services. And similarly to the domestic major innovations are defined based on a minimum of 25% area of thermal envelope and required that performance is improved to the defined cost optimal levels for uh, the different non-domestic uh, building types. So on the, uh, just a few slides on the NIP uh, methodology and on the software. The NIP methodology is used for both BR and partial calculations for buildings other than dwellings. It calculates the primary energy and CO2 emissions associated with the standardized use of the building. And clearly um, these calculations take into account um, activities, the values specified in activities database for different types of buildings so that buildings are rated correctly for uh, in relation to their use. And this is, I suppose, an additional challenge for non-domestic buildings because obviously the domestic building is only used for domestic residential purposes, but a non-domestic building could be a primary school or a hospital with very different um, energy use. So results are, are expressed in terms of ratios of figures for non-domestic. For the BER, it, sorry, the ratio is for actual versus notional building and for partial uh, compliance is for actual versus reference buildings. So it's their different types of, or different, uh, the reference buildings defined differently for BR and for partial compliance purposes. And the software used for NIP includes the Irish version of the simplified building energy model interface, ISMIE, and also a list of other approved software is available on the SEAI website, and these include dynamic uh, simulation software. The best source of information on Partel is the TGDL, available from the Department of Housing. And uh, there's detailed documentation also on the NIP methodology and ISMIE software, which is available on the SAI website and covers all aspects from the survey methodology and the evidence required to the software manuals and details of calculations for actual reference and notional buildings. The activity databases are also available. So going forward, these are some of the technical developments that are currently in the pipeline or being investigated. Calculation of cooling will be introduced in deep fairly soon. And this is going to be based on installed systems providing cooling. Overheating checks for the deep uh, for DEEP were uh, also developed following a study on overheating and an update for the heat bomb calculations also that takes into account the degradation in performance due to compressor cycling is, uh, is also in the pipeline, as is a tool to check 
major renovation compliance. Other future updates currently considered uh, and that um, will most likely subject to public consultation are a different accounting of exported PV with likely a partial rather than full consideration of the electricity exported. Calculation methodology for group and district heating schemes a calculation methodology for non-domestic heat pump systems and consideration for building automation and control systems in line with the European standard. So starting um, looking at the SAI supports from retrofits and starting from some figures on policy targets, um, the residential sector accounts for approximately 27% of all energy usage in Ireland and the targets uh, also reflect this. Numbers are ambitious on the new builds, approximately 355,000 new A-rated dwellings are to be constructed by 2030. On the retrofit side, the figure of half a million homes to brought to B2 um, level is now well known. And so is the target of 400,000 homes to be retrofitted with heat pumps. On the commercial side, two thirds of buildings are expected to be upgraded by 2040 and all by uh, 2050. And finally, all public sector buildings are to be brought to B level by 2030. So what does the budget 2020? 21 mean for SEAI, it's a very substantial increase in budget with significant scaling up of existing activities and developments of new programs. Among the new developments, SEAI is uh, developing a one-stop shop model to encourage supply chain development, making retrofit easier for homeowners. This is a summary of grant programs available from SEAI. Most of these are for homes, uh, apart from communities, that uh, also includes non-domestic buildings. Our fixed grant program is Better Energy Homes, with upgrades available for uh, the most uh, common uh, measures. Fabric insulation, heat pump systems, heating controls, solar thermal, uh, and it's an ideal proposition for both single measure uh, but also for more comprehensive projects. There are eligibility criteria based, for example, on a year of construction, but the grants are not means tested. Our free energy upgrades for uh, low income homes have been given additional funding. And these works are determined on a case-by-case -case basis by SEAI uh, through surveyors and delivered through a panel of contractors. Grants are still available under the PV grant pilot. Also here, um, eligibility criteria applies in terms of year of construction and a minimum BR to be achieved. Communities grants provide support for community projects, which include a mix of homes and non-domestic buildings. Our communities support also include advice and technical supports from the initial stages of uh, projects. The National Retrofit Scheme is piloting the concept of one-stop shop, as I mentioned. And this aims to remove barriers to retrofit for a homeowner. For example, homeowners may be very motivated to upgrade, but the whole process may seem too difficult and challenging. So with the one-stop shop, the entire end-to-end -end process from assessing the home and the works required to engaging the subtract, so the, uh, engaging the contractor and uh, quality um, assurance, and also grant administration is centrally managed, helping uh, the homeowner through the retrofit experience. So for this scheme, homeowners um, do, 
don't make the application um, directly, but the one-stop shop submits an application on their behalf. The target is uh, a B2 has to be achieved. And for the one-stop shop, the maximum application um, size is 2 million of grant uh, euro of grant money. And the minimum is 100,000 grant money. There's also an electric vehicles home charger grant and uh, details are available on the website. And on the non-domestic um, support, uh, there is um, there's grant support available for organizations working towards achieving certification of a building or an asset against the exceed certified standard for energy efficient design. And this is a certification for energy efficient design management. And uh, I suppose different grant amounts available are, are available depending on the size of the company. And also there's um, professional grants available for professional services and for uh, expenditure. So that concludes uh, my presentation. Thanks for listening. And I'm not sure if there's a, a time for questions now or there's a, a Q&A session later.